I think a lot of us can remember the first time we ever heard Stairway to Heaven. For me, it was in my dad's classic muscle car. He had like a big 8-track player inside. And uh, if you've never seen an 8-track before, they look like this. So he put in the Led Zeppelin cartridge, and all of a sudden I was hearing Stairway to Heaven for the first time. And what's weird about the 8-track version is the song is so long, and 8-tracks had this really weird anomaly, where if the song was too long, it had to pause the song, click over to the next program, and finish it out. So that would happen with Stairway to Heaven, so it was a really weird way to hear the song for the first time. When I first got into playing guitar, I remember a lot of my friends were obsessed about playing the intro to the song, but I was always more interested in playing the solo because uh, just the epicness of the solo at the end just really got to me. It really made me want to play guitar, especially lead guitar. It's funny because wanting to learn Stairway to Heaven was so prevalent that it became this cliche, and they even highlighted it in the movie Wayne's World, if you remember this scene. By the way, that didn't even sound like Stairway to Heaven. They couldn't even play three of the notes and not get copyrighted. So that's why I don't do a ton of Led Zeppelin stuff, by the way. They're really quick on that copyright button for some reason. Anyhow, one of the parts of the solos that I was able to play first, because I was a pretty new guitar player, was actually the very end. So there's this pull-off lick that Jimmy Page does, followed by this bend. So it really taught me a cool technique at a young age. It goes like this. <laughs> And I read somewhere that he used his Telecaster in the studio to play that part. So that's why I'm holding this Telecaster, although this is a really strange one. Check out the fretboard. So when I play that lick, it's very playable when I'm sitting down. And if I stand up, it's almost as playable. Let's try it. Toss on the old strap. Okay. So that's pretty close to what the album does. I remember though seeing the song remains the same for the first time and they play Stairway to Heaven and Jimmy Page rips into this epic solo where he just improvises, you know, he goes in and out of the real solo from the album, does some improvising and then comes back to the album version. And I was really surprised because right before the vocals come in at the end, he does that same lick but he alters it. And I always wondered why he plays it like this instead. <laughs> And it wasn't until I got a double neck Gibson for myself that I was able to realize why he had to alter that final lick. So let's switch to that guitar really quick. So the first time I played this guitar, I was actually really surprised by 10 things and I made a video about that. I'll post the link to that in the uh, description. But I remember being really surprised that this guitar only has 20 frets. That really surprised me. Both fretboards only have 20 frets. And what's really weird is the cutaway here. You would think that it's really easy to reach the higher frets. Uh, this is not an SG, but I have an SG that kind of has a similar shape, and it's really easy to reach the really high frets. I talk about that in the other video. So I was really shocked to realize that the most reachable fret on this guitar is the 18th fret. You know, you could reach up to the 20, but it's quite a stretch. So it makes a lot of sense since Jimmy Page uses the double neck live to play Stairway to Heaven that he would have that same issue not being able to reach the 20th fret too well. Now I'm sitting down and it's difficult. Could you imagine if I was standing up like he does? I'll do that in a little bit. So I'm gonna try to play the album version lick on this guitar and uh, see what happens. <laughs> Almost impossible. I was actually trying my hardest to make that sound good, and that's the best I could get out of it. So should we try that now standing up? I don't mind torturing my fingers a little bit for you guys. Owie. Now that's such an important lick because it leads us into the vocals that you have to do something that's close to what the album does. So instead of reaching to the 20th fret, Jimmy Page does a clever workaround and he just moves it back to the 19th fret. Maybe it's not so clever, but uh, it works and it sounds very musical. So he basically does the same lick, but he just moves the highest note back a half a step. So he, instead of playing C, he plays B and he goes like this. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Now that's still difficult, you know, just because of the way this guitar's neck is, it's hard enough to reach to the 18th fret, but we have to go one more beyond that to the 19th fret to pull this off. Pardon the pun. Okay, I'm gonna try to stand up and see what it feels like. 
still difficult, but way more playable than trying to hit that 20th fret and then do the bend at the end. That's just impossible in my opinion. Now I would love to take credit and say, oh, I just figured that out after I got the double neck. What really happened was I made that video about the 10 things that I wasn't expecting about a double neck guitar. And then some people wrote in in the comment section and told me, yeah, that's why Jimmy Page couldn't do the end of Stairway to Heaven solo correctly. So I'm really grateful to anyone who wrote in and let me know about this. Uh, you made this video possible, so thank you. You also helped put my mind at rest because I always wondered about that part in the live version. So, you know, now that I've actually felt it for myself firsthand, it totally makes sense. Okay, everyone, I hope that was as interesting for you as it was for me when I first heard about it. Uh, I know this is kind of nerdy stuff, you know, oh, it's just one little lick, who cares? But to me, it's a huge deal, I don't know. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you at the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.